What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel once again. So today I want to do a quick teardown video on this 2013 5.0 liter Coyote engine out of an F-150. Now the reason why we changed this engine out is because it had a compression loss on cylinder, I believe three or four on here, uh, that was causing a slight misfire at idle. So I went in and he brought the vehicle in, you know, spark, air, fuel, all that stuff was good to go. I knew about the sunken valve issue on these, so I went right for a compression test. It was down maybe three, six percent, no big deal. Uh, I was like, okay, at that point, I went in with a leak down tester, and man, oh man, was the intake valve on here just bleeding off into the intake on there. So if you don't know it already, the 2011 through 2013, you know, the first generation 5.0 engines, had a real issue with the intake valves being too soft, and eventually they would get sunken or too looked into the head. So a better way, better way to explain this is, here's the seat in the head, here's the valve, okay? Opening and closing, opening and closing, all these years. Well, it was too soft, so when it's pounding and closing like this to the seat, it eventually start closing up like a tulip, and we had sunk it into there. Now the angle of the valve no longer matches the angle of the seat in the head that hasn't changed, and guess what? You have a slight compression loss, and you'll get a compression misfire. So if you're having an issue with the misfire you can't figure out, and it's mainly at idle, it's kind of rough, you can kind of see it there, and you know, air, fuel, spark are good to go, unfortunately, it's probably the sunken valve issue. So like I said, it's 11 through 13 for sure. They identified it. A revised valve is out for the intake, um, but you know, Ford, they use the rest of the bin up of uh, valves on the 14 models, so some of the 14s may have this issue also. Now, any remanufactured heads or new heads or remanufactured engines, of course, by now would have the latest valve in there to fix that issue. So the reason why we changed this engine out on here instead of fixing the head is because of the cost, basically. The amount of labor to pull an engine, to pull the heads, send them off to the machine shop, uh, which is not cheap, and they're a good ones few and far nowadays. Um, and if you're having an issue over here, guess what? You're going to have an issue over here next. So you're sending both of them off to the machine shop and it got real expensive real quick. Plus you're coming back together with a head that has 130,000 miles on it, with new valves, and a short block that still has 130,000 miles on it. So the customer's like, it's a no brainer. Let's put a Ford Reman engine in there with all the latest parts and be done with it. So before I send this core back, I want to tear it down. And mainly because whenever I post anything on the, on the, the forums, or not forums, on social media about the 5.0, man, the wolves come out of the woods. And they tell me the 5.0 can do no wrong. I'm, I'm wrong. They can never fail. The, well, it's not so bad compared to the EcoBoost. It's not so bad compared to this. The, the 543 valve, holy cow, how dare you say anything? It's like, there are issues. There are issues with each generation of the 5.0 um, up until the current generation, the fourth generation. So one of these days, I'm going to do a video on each generation and all the issues associated with them. Uh, but for right now, let's, just go, let's go ahead. I'm going to pull this head off. Once I get it off and onto the bench, we'll start pulling valves. I'll show you exactly what the issue is. All right, now with everything off there, all the valve train components and the timing chain up front here, before I pull the head, I just want to show you guys that the, you know, the intake followers are in place and there's nothing wrong over here on three and four. Everything's good to go on here, uh, which is normal. I mean, I don't usually don't see anything wrong with latch adjusters or followers on these, um, but the valves are definitely an issue. So. I'm gonna unbolt the head, put it in the bench, and we'll start checking for those sunken valves. All right, so I have the cylinder head off and I cleaned a few things up on here. So we're looking at cylinder one, two, three, and four. And I found out in my notes, cylinder four was the issue. Three. You see a difference? Four. Three, two, and one. All right, so just looking at this, you can see all the exhaust valves are sitting the same way, all right? They don't look sunken at all. The intake valves over here, you can see they're sticking out quite a bit. They're almost flush with like this bridge right here. Actually, they're proud of the bridge right here, if you feel it. 
See how they're proud of it? They're actually higher than that little bridge right there. Same thing right here. They stick off further than it. Three. Pretty much the same. Now let's take a look at four. Do you see a difference? They're actually sub flush quite a bit of that bridge. Look at that. So you look over to this one right here and you can see how it's sticking out. And over here, it's below. Look at that. So the valves are actually higher. See if I can zoom you in. There we go. See you see her sticking up higher than the bridge there? Now let's jump all the way over to four. They're below. Yeah, that's what it is. That's why they call them sunken valves or tuluped valves. So I'll try to pop one of these out while we have uh proper zoom here. I'll let it just stick out far enough. I get past the seal on here. I mean, this thing is razor sharp. It'll, it'll probably cut paper. So if you look at it on here, that's the seat face right here. This whole thing should be the same angle. And that's called the seat face. This whole angle part should be the same. Look at that difference. You see it right here? That is sharp all the way around. And the same thing on this one. Let me try to get it out of there. See that? You can see a side profile right there? Yeah, this one's not as sharp, uh, but it's definitely failed. It'll leak. Whereas this one, I mean, it's razor sharp. Now, come down here. I actually popped the spring on this one too. This one's an okay cylinder. No problems. Let's look at it. You see that angle on there is consistent all the way down? Out. I mean, this one's starting to get in the very edge, but otherwise it's fine. See that? That's how it should be. Matches the angle of the seat and the head, and it seals up. You go down here, and Yamaha. I mean, that's razor sharp right there. You see it? That'll probably cut my glove if I run across there hard enough. Yep, that's where it comes from. The whole sunken valve issue. And some of these have seat problems where they have uh, pitting to them and stuff like that. Uh, but don't see it as often. And as you can see here, there's no real issues with the seats on here. This is all just water. It's not pitting. I was water testing them earlier. They look just fine. Obviously, they're messed up now because they're trying to match the, uh, the valve that is damaged but over here you can see a good one regular seat like that looks beautiful right that's how it should be so what i want to do really quick is take these valves and i'll put them on the the bench there let me get a better look at them all right over here on the bench let's take a closer look at a known good valve so you can see right here, this shiny band right here, it's called the seat face. And it looks pretty much fine all the way around. Pretty even, right? And this one has what they call a seat margin. You see a squared up edge right here? That's the margin. That's how a regular known good valve looks. By comparison, if we're looking at the same thing, this is the intake valve from cylinder four, the one that had these sunken valves. Look at that edge on there. It is razor sharp. 
So the seat face looks basically fine all the way around. Maybe some minor pitting. But because it's so soft, it's sinking further in and it's wearing further all the way down and in this case, past that margin. That margin's not even here anymore. It's just a razor sharp edge. So that right there is a perfect example of what a sunken valve looks like. I can illustrate it even further. I'll take this one, bring it across here, leave some dirt, and then you take this one, it's razor sharp, and you do the same thing, and you make like these razor cuts, look at that. Well, that's how razor sharp it is, and that's why you have the compression loss and the compression misfire. So if you're having issues, especially the rear cylinders, you know, three and four and seven and eight, and you have a misfire and you can't figure it out, uh, you probably want to get a leak down tester and start leak down testing. I'm sure you're going to find the intake valve has sunken like this one, causing your issue. That's all for now. See you guys next time.